This one kind of surprised me. Emily Baker, friend of the show, everyone's like, F Ethan, bro, don't defend him. And it's like a legal channel. Like, this is her whole job is to talk about lawsuits and stuff. I know, and I've seen some of you in the chat, not everyone loves Ethan Klein. I understand that. Not everyone on this platform <laughs> loves Am I like a murderer? I mean, what did I do? <laughs> you said that exercising is bad. Oh, uh, that's true. You did say that. I mean, what did I do to deserve this? Am I really that bad? Hello, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's video, we are exploring the bubble of Ethan H3H3 and Abba and Preach. These are different bubbles on the internet. And in order to explore them, we have to first acknowledge that everyone lives in a bubble. That's how I see the world. It's okay that you live in a bubble. It's good that you live in a bubble. I live in a bubble. You live in a bubble. A bubble is or can be a thought process, a place you were born, a religion you were born into, a cultural expectation of behavior. It could even be you with nature. A bubble is just to say that we have a different relationship with reality. App and Preach have their own relationship with reality. And then H3H3, Ethan Klein and Ela Klein have their own relationship with reality because we're all raised differently. We come up differently, you know what I mean? Like we look different, we're treated different, we have different relationships with the same planet we all exist on. Now recently, Abba and Preach and Ethan and Ela were in a little bit of a tiff and I just wanted to comment a few things that I observed because this is a great lesson for all of us. My work is predicated on the understanding or belief that we are all, yes, living on the same planet, but because we have different relationships with words, people, expectations, it leads to a lot of chaos, friction, conflict. In this situation, Abba and Preach, and disclaimer, I am friends with Abba. Abba is somebody I consider a coworker friend. Most of the time when we talk, we talk about work, but we do talk. I have access to him. If I hit him up right now, he would return my message. So I do want to say that as a disclaimer in case some of some people who don't watch me normally are here. And then of course, I'm a big fan of H3H3. As you guys know, I've been watching them for years. I love Ethan. I love Ela. I follow Ela on Instagram because she is a fashion icon. I love her so much. But the way we see the world is just not relatable. I don't always understand Ethan and Ela, and I don't always understand Abba and Preach, but what I do understand is there's a misunderstanding. What I want to do is point out why those things happen. Specifically, Ethan was recently shocked at the fact that people don't seem to like him or even people he considers friends to the show have to preface their sentences about him with, now I know we don't always like Ethan. I know Ethan's not perfect. And Ethan is genuinely confused. What did I do? He's genuinely perplexed that people have such an issue with him. And the weirdest part is him, Ela, and his crew of Yes Men, who I love, I love the crew, they really think think it's something shallow, like Ethan's just fat. For fans who don't yeah. like me because I'm fat, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's the whole marketing. That's the whole one. He, he got us. He got us. Our marketing is to pander to the fans that they don't like it because they're, oh my day. Ethan, you're saying that because you're insecure. <laughs> Ethan is as misinformed as Aiden Ross and Sneeko. And yes, even though they're all rich and all millionaires, they are three of the most uneducated content creators that the people get to view and hang out with. And this is also a disclaimer, I'm friends with Sneeko. Sneeko has my phone number, we collab, Sneeko is my friend. But again, we talk mostly about work because again, we're all doing different things on this platform. Some people are making money, some people are sharing a message. I'm a little bit in between. P.S. Sign up for my Discord and one-on-one -on -one calls, links down below to help fund this work. We all have reasons we're here and we all make our money in different ways. Ethan and Ela are beyond rich. They have 100% they are considered successful, but this is only via capitalism. They are successful capitalistically, just like Aiden Ross, just like Sneeko. But in terms of intelligence, in terms of discourse, no offense, and I mean this in the kindest way possible. When I recently saw Ethan talk about, I'm not a centrist, I'm not a centrist. Ethan, you're a centrist. You're not a centrist in the U.S., but in global context. How am I a centrist in any way? Please tell me. I don't accept that shit. The only thing you might say that I'm not super left on is like, I'm not like a full blown fucking socialist, but I 100%, I mean, I'm like, I think that Scandinavia has the perfect kind of take on that. And that's considered like ultra left, no? Habibi, let me tell you, if I was hanging out with my POC, my in the trenches minorities, the people who are really trying to change the system, not only is Ethan a centrist, he's almost not even a person. Ethan's knowledge on the subjects of minority struggle is so minimal, he's not even a person in regards to 
inquiring after his thoughts. And I don't mean this to be discouraging. I mean it to be realistic. In my world where we're trying to do things for minority people, whether it's individualistically or part of a community, the idea that Ethan or Hassan, God bless him, thinks they understand the plight of those minorities, no. Yes, on the surface level, on the very superficial, superficial level of politics, yes, but not about the people, the real struggle of these communities, the heart of these communities Ethan and Hassan have no idea what's happening, or at least based off of the image they portray to the world, they don't know. So Ethan in particular doesn't elicit this confidence that he knows what he's talking about. Even when he was mentioning years ago or a couple years ago within the pandemic, I don't remember, I was watching the show because I watched the show and he was talking about Palestine and Israel and how he doesn't know much about it. These are complicated problems the human species is facing and it is impacting millions of people. So for one guy on a YouTube show to be perplexed on why people don't like him, I'll tell you why. Nobody likes a guy who knows absolutely nothing about life sitting on a pedestal lecturing everyone about life. No offense to Ethan, though he has struggled and he's definitely overcome, the struggle Ethan faces is a very specific kind. And considering that Ethan himself is sort of not a... He hasn't figured out a lot of the basics and a lot of his personal health-wise, mental health-wise, like he's working on it. He's not exactly a person who's done something about it in a way that he could be someone we turn to and say, hey, you walk the walk, you could accomplish this thing. Can I talk to you about it? The only thing I can ask Ethan about is business and being a good partner and being a good husband. Now, in my opinion, personally, I think Ethan is a good husband and is a good father. Everybody's happy with him. His wife seems content. All these red mes- red pill menosphere guys who are saying things like Ethan's wife will leave him. Hila and Ethan are obviously meant to be together. They're so lovely together. And yes, do I want Ethan to stay in shape and to be healthy? healthy enough to live a long life with his family. Yes, we all want that. But come on, we all smoke. We drive fast cars. We jump out of planes for fun. We're all playing with death in different ways. So I'm not going to judge Ethan and Hila for that. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to encourage you guys to explore the differences between these communities and why we have chaos, which also coincides with my belief that world peace is impossible and we shouldn't be aiming for it because it's not possible. If Abba and preach, Abba is so nice. He's such a gentleman. I can't even explain to you how good of an energy Abba is. When I got to hang out with him and we were chilling, Abba is nothing but a gentleman. Yes, is he more conservative than I am? Sure. But, okay, he's open and curious. He calls into my show. He ponders. He wants to know. I love that about Abba. Abba is a much more open person than he was when he first started making content. Preach, we love Preach. Preach and I are also in contact, disclaimer, for a possible collab. So again, Preach knows and I know who he is. But I, the little I know of Preach, he's a good husband. He's a solid businessman. He's good to his friends. He's consistent with work. There's nothing really wrong with Abba and Preach. But if you just, if you just minimize them to the menosphere, which they have pulled away from over the years, they have literally pulled away from red pull dogma over the years, then you're not giving them the chance to not only change and grow, but be confident in who they are today. Abba is a good person right this second. Preach is a good person right this second. Ethan is a good person right this second. Ela is a good person right this second. Nobody has to change because you guys are already good people. But what you have to decide is whether or not you want to change in ways that help you understand others. So Ethan had this conservative on the show and this conservative was saying that he feels like it's what he does not want is a spouse who's flaunting herself on the internet. And he feels like for him, this is the best way to have a relationship. And Ethan felt like this was coming from insecurity. By the way, Abba and Preach, you cowards, you losers. When you make a video about this, which I know you will, titled Ethan Klein's Mad or whatever, include this. A link to the full interview and encourage your audience to go watch that full interview. We got you, Ethan. We're going to put the link in the description below. You guys know. And the title of this video will be Ethan is Bad. Go tell them. Go watch that full interview where Ethan's so embarrassing. And then come back and tell me how embarrassing Ethan is. <laughs> because I, and we'll play this whole thing, or you're just the biggest coward in the world. I am sure that if any one of your fans watch that whole interview, they will realize what a disingenuous piece of shit you're being right now. Okay. He doesn't think that you or women, significant others, should post themselves with like cleavage and stuff. <laughs> That's not what we said. Jesus fucking Christ. That's not what we said. Listen, listen. 
Okay, I'm gonna make this super abundantly clear so that there's no more misunderstandings. I thought there's I was always clear. gonna be a misunderstanding. But here. There's I don't a... care what you want to post online. I just said that for some people in their relationships, they don't want a partner who's posting thirst traps. They don't want a partner who's on social media attention whore. And that's a very reasonable thing to not want in a relationship. That is it. I've been preached felt like it's not insecurity. It's about being what's like what's proper. And then even Papa Gut, who yes, I'm in contact with, and we collab, had this really interesting insight where he's like, yeah, what's wrong with insecurity? Security. And I was like, interesting. I didn't see it as most of these things. I saw it as a bubble issue, a cultural issue, a relationship with how we see and view ourselves. Look, my partner and I, who I love to the ends of the earth, I will go through every battle of change that him and I want to go through. I, I will endure any kind of, whoop, that's a twist in the relationship, right? As long as it's not abusive. But one of the things that him and I have both said to each other is there is an expectation of how we dress how we present, and what we say. Because these things not only reflect us, but our spouse. They not only reflect us, but my brand. And only reflects, you know, there's a lot that goes into being a content creator. Now, I'm not much of a virtue signaler. I personally don't care that much about the influence of YouTubers. What I care about is whether or not we can counter bad ideas. And as a person who's on OnlyFans, who is a content creator, who does all these things. Now, YouTube is my primary income, but I do OnlyFans on the side because I am pro nude and erotic work. So I've been in nudist communities for the last f almost 15 years. I've hung out with so many cool people. I've done solstice parade. I've pr like, I've literally marched naked as part of the parade, not a protest. I have done events that are nude in public. I'm not, a f I've worked so hard to dismantle all of the bullshit I learned growing up about my body and about the expectations I should have as a woman. So I understand Ela's desire to say, I'm going to dress how I want. My stance is you shouldn't dress provocatively unless you're with me. What's provocative? And it, this is what we're talking about. Yeah, his, his this stance. is what we're talking about. You didn't say provocative is pretty or not or whatever. It's because he's saying specifically you cannot dress provocatively if you're not with me. And that is controlling and that is going back a thousand years. Right. They, I will wait? dress however I want if I'm with you or without you. Nobody will tell me how to dress. That is the point. But again, relationships aren't just about you. Unless that is the kind of relationship you have, which I don't think it is. Ethan and Ela are a team. They seem like a really good team. But when Ela talks like that, she forgets that it makes it sound like Ethan's opinion doesn't matter and he's no one to her. But they don't understand that because in their bubble with their language, they're just saying that Ela as an individual is a real person and she gets to decide how she dresses. Now, again, as somebody on my Instagram that's like half naked, I am not about to police Ela's choices. But I am going to be open to the idea that conservatives or more conservative leaning people, and I don't mean conservative just politically, but conservative in the way they hold themselves, because I know plenty of progressives and liberals that are conservative in nature. They like to be more modest. I'm not going to look at them and say that this is auto automatically insecurity or toxicity because I come from a conservative background. My farm brother and his wife, we call him farm brother, it's a nickname, My his wife and him are very modest, they don't have opposite sex friends, and they don't dress half naked. Now, it's not because they're insecure, it's because they are disciplined. Now, I know, I know, everyone's going to hear that and be like, what, what does discipline have to do with it? It takes discipline to be modest. I can't help but take off my clothes, girls. I just got to show off my booty. It's so good. I love it so much. I work really hard to maintain the little bit of health that I'm able to maintain right now. And so for me, I, I want to share the body. I think the body should be nude. I am sending out a message behind a thought. That's my why. My why is that I think the human body is beautiful and in context proper. Out of context could be improper. It would be improper of me to show up nude to a non-nudist location. But it would be proper of me to dress scantily or provocatively or ho-ish on the internet because the internet's a free-for-all and I'm allowed to do that. And it works with my brand as being pro-sex positivity, body positivity. Like this coincides with my thinking. With Ethan and Ela though, what is the real reason? Ela's I understand. Ela is just like, I'm a woman, I want to do what I want. This guy thinks he knows how every single woman thinks and what she does and why she does it. So if I dress nice, they think that I do it because I want other men's attention. That's not what I want. You don't know what I want. You don't know me. That yeah. is not how it works. I don't care if other men give me attention. I don't actually do it for that. So you guys don't know shit. And I post, Instagram, I post Instagram photos most of my audience is women. I don't even post it for guys. You guys don't know shit. 
If you, you show cleavage, you're she trying to cheat. She posted for me. Him. I posted for Olivia. Yeah. When I see Olivia comment, I'm like, hell yeah. <laughs> it's a gift. It is. I mean, that's what it is. It's for mm -hmm. my ladies out there. Literally. We all girlies. I feel you. Girl, you do you. You the queen of fashion. You can do whatever you want. But Ethan, why does Ethan think this man has insecurity when this man might just have boundaries? My farm brother and his wife are so disciplined in their religion and modesty is a part of that discipline. It takes a lot to be disciplined enough not to want to be technically very pretty. This sounds weird, but coming from a religious bubble, if you're just modest in yourself, your beauty is showing through. But if you're trying to be sexy, that is a different game. If my sister-in-law came over to my house in a crop top, I'd be like, ma'am, why are you in a crop top? Oh my God, what are you doing? Not because I am anti-crop top. I love a crop top, girl. But my sister-in-law is going down a journey of discipline in which modesty is a key point. And if she came in a tank top that was immodest or a crop top to my house, it would be my job as her friend to say, hey girl, let me help you accomplish your goals on your journey. And her journey is modesty. My journey is slutism. Yeah, it's a new religion. I just made it up. But like there is something to be said about the relationship we have with our bodies that aren't always when talking about relationships rooted in insecurity, but it's more in what's proper. So Ethan saying that this must be insecurity. It's not that it's that this is their way of life. If my farm brother had an opposite sex friend who was a female, I would be like, why are you even talking to a girl? And you're probably thinking, well, what does it matter, Brittany, that he's talking to a girl? Ah, it doesn't matter for you and me. Wait, you and me. <laughs> what matters is for him that he's on the journey of not allowing temptation to come into his life. And my brother is handsome enough that I have never seen a woman try to be his friend without sleeping with him. Never, 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 ne not once. My brothers are so handsome that women will try to become my friend just so they can talk to my brothers. And I'm like, get out of here. My brothers are not seeking this kind of interaction with women, right? So again, I can help my friends along on their journey as you should too understanding that we're not the same. Abba and Preach aren't just some men of sphere guys. They're men who have Proof in the pudding that their way of living works to some extent. Preach is in a very happy marriage. And Abba is on the road to finding that partner who will become his wife. And I know there is that perfect girl out there for him. But she's got to be for him. Which means she has to see the world similarly to him. Or enough to make cohesive um, agreements in the relationship. So my partner and I see the world so similarly that he doesn't mind that I'm on OnlyFans. He is progressive. And then, of course, on top of that, gender means like nothing to us. So you have to understand, as a couple, we're even more separate than these two groups. Gender means nothing to us. So the idea that this conversation is about whether your girl should wear this or your guy should wear this, it doesn't even compute in our conversations. I don't ask my partner, do you mind that I, as a female, am wearing this clothing? No, I say, hey, do you mind as your partner that I'm wearing this clothing? Because my partner and I don't have gender roles. We don't have any expectations of any like of each other because of gender. We only want to know how we're doing as humans. How are we how are we cohesively organizing our life in, you know, in this relationship in relation to how we present ourselves? So again, I want to bridge this gap of misunderstanding because I'm really kind of emotionally upset that Ethan and Abba can't get along and I want them to be friends, but not really. I just want a world which is the ideal, which is the fantasy, the utopia, that these people should be able to get along because I like both of them. But I am not the uh, line. <laughs> I am not the end all be all of who should get along. And that is my dream. My dream is that we can get along even though we, we disagree. And I know in the past, I'm very critical of people. I call everybody names. Like I'm very critical of people, um, certain people who want to be taken seriously. Of course, you have to be taken seriously. And so I've talked so much on Ethan and Ela. I'm sure they'll never want to talk to me. But that makes me sad because, again, I grew up in an environment where, like, yeah, you talk your shit. You all discuss it out loud. And then you go, OK, agree to disagree. Because the truth is it's better to say it out loud with your chest than to keep it in and pretend we all know what's going on. So if we want to create cohesive relationships on YouTube and then hopefully in the world, we have to be able to be OK with the fact that we do not agree and we might not understand the why. Again, conservatives, not always because of insecurity, will make these decisions. Liberals, monogamous people, all of these kinds of relationships, I could say you're monogamous because you're insecure. But really, it could be that, but it also could be the idea that this is just how you see the world. This is how you imagined your life and then you're living that out that dream, right? I had a friend of mine I asked a while back like, would you date a bisexual guy? Would you date a trans guy? Would you date this kind of person? And ultimately, most people answer with, hmm, you know, that's not how I imagined my life. 
So when you're in a relationship with somebody and you imagine them to be a modest person, somebody who's more conservative, and then all of a sudden they start taking off their clothes, getting on Instagram, doing a little like suggestive thing here and there, well, it changes the idea of the person you had. And that's what really impacts a lot of marriages is that we're not growing together or we're not on the same page. So again, before we judge why someone has an idea about something, we should know the why. I think Ethan tried to get it out of that conservative guy. Why do you think that? Why do you think that? Why do you think that? And I don't think he gave exactly the answer that would have been helpful, but maybe he did and I missed it. Ultimately, usually it's a, it comes down to discipline and ethics. I think it says something about you that you're willing to be half naked on Instagram. To me, it says something good to somebody else. It might say something bad about you. But again, that's the point is that perspective is just different. When I go home to my mom's house next week, because, you know, I'm moving and doing all this stuff, I am not going to wear my normal clothes in front of my mother. I'm going to wear my decent. This is this is decent. Do you see what I'm wearing? I'm wearing like a, a sports bra and a tank top. So this is decent. But if it was down here, all of a sudden, if my boobs were showing at all any cleavage, my mom and dad would have a field day because their discipline is around modesty, okay? It's about looking good, but being modest. So again, when we see these things happen on the internet, whether it's Papa Gut or Abba or Ethan or Ela or me, understand that we are speaking from our own bubbles, our own understanding of reality with our own language. I would love to talk to Abba. I would love to talk to Ethan and Ela. Again, I really like everyone's work, but I don't always agree with any of you. I agree with some things here and there, but I often disagree with both of you. And I think that's what's so beautiful, that we can agree to disagree. So not to be such a white lady from the 90s, but we need to learn to agree to disagree. Okay, I'll talk to you guys soon. Have the most fantastic day. I would love to hear your thoughts. And if anyone from Ethan's team or Eli's team or anything wants to reach out to me, please do, because I do love you. I love the crew. I love the H3 podcast. I love everything about those people, but that doesn't mean I always agree with you because our methods will be different. Okay. Shout out to Abba and Preach and everyone else I mentioned in this video, Papa Gut and everybody else. I wish you all the best. Okay. Talk to you guys soon. Bye. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me Cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool